amongst these men here, from starting from here, going around this way, we all need to rethink the way we think about mental health. We need to, we are actually sick, 70% of us in this room. And we need a psychiatrist. We need a therapist. I'm not afraid to say that I have, I retain a psychiatrist and I retain a therapist all at the same time. And why? Because when you become self-aware, because if you want to lead others, you must first lead yourself. And you must first, it starts with a self-awareness. That I behave the way I behave because of not what is wrong with me. It's about probably what happened to me. And so therefore, when you see somebody behaving in a certain way, don't start judging, don't start asking. Now, Mr. Mahinda, what, what's wrong with you? Please, kindly, with kindness, ask me, what happened to Mr. Mahinda? Yeah? Because it's about the baggage. It's, the, it's, it's what, what you see is the tip of the iceberg. Beneath, there's a huge boulder yeah? of the iceberg. Yeah? And that is where, what you see at the tip, that is where it is coming from. So, Let me quote three people. One of them is a long time, is a writer called Napoleon Hill. He said, uh, he, talk, he talked about three words to conceive, to believe. The first thing is for you to conceive, that is to have an idea of something. Believe in it and you will achieve. So I'm just doing good. Why am I saying this? It's because everything in life starts with vision. And I was also quoting someone called Theodore Rosner, who said, do what you can with what you have, wherever you are. So, after having that vision, have a uh, start, and you have to determine where am I? What resources do I have? We call it the, the, the now, the here and now. Then, know what your port of call is. And now, when you know your port of call, it does not matter the direction of the wind. You can be able to set yourself in such a way that you can get your port of call. So Anthony Robin says that the power of a committed decision is the force that changes your life. So I had the, the pastor talk about uh, commitment, yeah, decision, and then commit. So act, yeah. All these things are related to your now and then, here and now, and your port of call. So, what are the strategies? What can you have a clear line of sight between where you're standing and where you're going? And if the wind is blowing against you, you can still set the sail so that even though the wind is blowing this way, it is actually taking you this way. Right? So, um, those are the, and it won't be uh, complete until I also tell you this. Uh, the Bible, the book of Proverbs, that as man in his heart, so is he. Without much further ado, I would like to welcome Pastor Ake to speak to this congregation of men uh, so that uh, we can share the wisdom that he has. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. So people are taking long to certain life. Men are busy taking women out, 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 but no one is taking a woman in as a wife. <laughs> because that is huge responsibility. It's coffees, coffees, tea, 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 Kisses, kisses, sexy, sex there. But nobody says, say now, you are my wife. That is huge responsibility. They are not great because the pressure of them is so much. They have grown for many years and they have not been able to suck it out. No money, no job. Yes. 
big line of siblings looking up to them who need school fees. They've got an ailing mother in the village who need medication and all that. And this man does not have time enough to save enough to invest in our life. Men are married late these days. You watch wedding show. You see if they are boys with it. You watch. The men you want. Oh, hello, sir. Oh, so you're not married at this age? Men are married at 45, going to 50. My friend, starting getting to get children when you're 50 years. But who can blame you? you? You can afford dowry now. You could not afford dowry before. So these things are affecting us. And then people start to look for other means of taking away that pressure. And we end up doing bad things, acting badly in society. And we don't even care if we end up in prison or we end up in trouble. We don't even care because there's nothing we are losing. But I want to say this. Number one, there is need for admission. How are we going to recover from this pressure mental? Admission. We have to admit. My friend, when I admit there is a problem, I'm on the path to overcoming my trouble. But we live in denial a lot because we are men. A man is not supposed to show weakness. So we were told. A man is not supposed to show tears. A man is not supposed to show inadequacy. A man must be adequate at all times. A man must be at the top. A man must be able. He is a man. He must be made of steel. He may bear, but he must not break. He is a man. But we must admit, things are not all right. I'm not going in the right direction. I'm not living a life I can afford. And I cannot keep on having children when I can't take even the ones I have through primary school. <coughs> and I cannot afford this rent. And I cannot afford this neighborhood. And I cannot afford that car. And I cannot afford those clothes. Admission. The prodigal son came to an admission. He said, I'm stubborn. He was a son of a wealthy man. He admitted, I'm stubborn. What situation are you dealing with that you need to admit? I am angry. I'm bitter. I'm lonely. I'm depressed. I'm hunting. I'm disappointed. I'm discouraged. Admission. After admission, there is need for self-confidence. Have a meeting with yourself. And we go back to the story of the prodigal son. He said, I'm hungry. And he said, there are people in my father's house who live better than this. I mean, I can be better than this. I don't have, I don't have to be like this. I don't Sometimes have... when things go south, you also be caught in your meetings. So, kill them and turn. They went to the pastor Kawabi now to Yungia Marakada. Now you can see the service of what? A chief. They went to the chief, but I had a chief. Now I can go to the chief. Okay, you can go to the chief's office. Hapa, Skizana Makeda, Kotini. And then the court told them, okay, fine, why don't you just go and settle this out of court? It didn't work. Then they went back to the court. And the gentleman said, okay, fine, I agree. So what is it that you want? Maintenance, you are a Actually, there were three. Three, okay. And of course, there was a ruling, a judgment that this gentleman should give 45,000 shillings per month. And the lady is getting how much? 500,000. So in this case, was it fair? No. No, it was not fair. Now, guess what happens? Of course, the case was cited and, cited and um, uh, the guy was given visitation nights. If you cross for 30 days, 15 days, in total, neither kwa baba, 15 days, through the chief. When I break, I'm not a chief, well, I can 15 days. Come on, you hold them, you are Come on, you hold them, Come on, you hold them, you are late. Come on, you hold them, you are late. And the guy did it very well for three years. And uh, at one point, I don't know what happened. And they went, the kids were brought, the gentleman took the kids. And uh, the lady was to come for the kids at four. So the lady never appeared at four when the gentleman returned the kids to the chief's office. He was like, I can there was an accident. Pale Machakos. And uh, Madame came at around 10. The gentleman requested to go. I don't have to now. I have to go to the house. 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 I have
Uwezi kwa tuwashia watoto weda na watoto Tumetua ulikuwa mereta watoto In the case of anything Tutakuwa hapa Then the lady came out Of course there was an accident It was not intentional And when the lady came Alikuja kwa chifu Alikuja kwa chifu na watoto Kamusa watoto wako 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 You know how our brother stopped Because of stress Nini Kama mapia ulikuwa na haa Kucha mimia yo The next day the lady went to court To look for one end of our list because the gentleman and the bottle is the bottle again now, and it is true. And the bottle again now. Now, little did they know that that is the day the gentleman had planned to kill all of them. So, when he went back with the wickets, and he had a passage of comes, and he finally had a katakata. So, as the leader was looking for one end of a list, the family community called a dam in a knocker, who can't say what they are. My father, no one to admit. So, as she came with the police to get the one end of a list, the family had gone. Now, to cut the story short, we are going to use our police as a man. We are going to do it to our family cars. Who now? I'm not saying that we should not be responsible, we should be. But look at that stress. Who is the one 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 who is the one? So, I'm not sure what story Ike is talking about. I call him Ike by the way. Director. When I direct, I'm not sure what story he's talking about, but... Uh, I'm very happy to be here. I'm glad that I made the decision to come. Uh, in, uh, I've learned quite a bit. Some of the things that I captured uh, from the various speakers that are up here was that we must have smart goals. Right? Uh, some, one thing that EK had mentioned to me in our various conversations was that attendee care it provides an ability for people to invest in the pension plan. And you know, being in the U.S., the employer that I work for also provides an ability for us to invest in the pension plan. So for those who don't know, there's three, three major avenues where you can save for retirement in the U.S. One of them is called Social Security, which is a government retirement plan where it's, uh, most employers have to put in a certain amount of your pay. It's 6.2%, uh, and then the employee also puts in 6.2%. This happens automatically. And then during retirement, which at this time it's uh, 62 years of age, uh, is your minimum retirement age, and then 67 years of age is your maximum retirement age. You get a certain amount of money. It's all based on how many years you work, uh, how much money you've been earning in the many years that you've been working. There's a percentage of calculation. Uh, so that's like what most people depend on. The second one is the employer pension plan. So this is something that not, a, not all employers have, but some of them do have. So they'll give you a percentage of your income. Uh, for my employer, for example, it's 2% uh, times the number of years of uh, service that you uh, worked at that employer times your last income, last annual income. So it comes out to whatever the percentage is. And then the third is a voluntary investment plan. This is something that you decide to invest in yourself. Most employers match your investment. So they'll say, for example, uh, you put in 10% of your in income, they'll match you up to 10%, some percentage, maybe 50% or 50 cents up to 10%. The way I look at that voluntary investment is it's free money. If my employer is matching me 50 cents up to 10% of my income, it's free money they're giving me. So I make a decision, I've always decided Ever since I was employed, that this, at the minimum, I'm going to put in enough money to be able to get the employer's match. Right? So I tell the care, you have an ability to invest, because I see the group is very diverse. So there's something maybe our banker friend can tell us. Investing, there's a time component and there's a compounding component. You know? So, the, early, the earlier you start investing, the better for you. If you you're going to make less money, right? But if you're young, you start investing, 
That's how you capture the most value. So if you're young here uh, and you just started working at Tenet here and there's an ability for you to invest, even if it's through your bank, do that. Because your money will grow over time and the earlier you start, the better it is going to be for you in retirement. Um, the other things that I, that I captured were budget, right? You make a certain amount of money, manage your expenses, so you're able to save some money, right? Don't spend above your means. Live within your means. I think both speakers mentioned that. Um, and then also put yourself first. I think we're, you know, both speakers mentioned as men, we tend to forget about, about ourselves. So try to put yourself first. Uh, one thing that I've learned is there's probably differing opinions, but also put, include your wife, right? Uh, for myself, I think this is probably why UK wanted me to speak, is in the US what I found out is for most of us, we're kind of forced by circumstances to invest in our kids, invest time in our kids, right? You can't expect the wife to do everything. We're not, we don't have the luxury of having, you know, Kazio and Yumba for most of us. So all the responsibilities of the house fall on, on the man and the woman. My kids play sports. So they both play soccer competitively. So I'm forced to be there for them. Somebody has to take them to practice. Somebody has to be there for them when they, you know, during their games. And they expect this from me. And I think it's a good thing that I, I have to do those things or I do those things because I find that I, the time that I spend with my kids, we have a different kind of bond. Um, it's not the way that I remember you know, fathers in Kenya, you know, Coming, coming home late, I think somebody mentioned that, right? Coming home late, on the weekends you're out with your friends, having drinks. Um, the kids only see you, set, you know, so many hours of the day, and then uh, not going to their school functions. You know, whether it's circumstances or a choice that we make, you know, our environment it requires us to be with our kids most of the time. So we're attending events, we're taking them to events. You know, I'm driving my kids, you know, I go to work in the morning, when I leave work, I go home, I pick them up from school, take them home, they get a snack, I take them to practice, we come home, we do homework. Um, and I think, you know, there's a certain level of relationship or, you know, that I've, or bond that I've been able to have with my kids just by being, doing these things with them. So, going to uh, my nephew's soccer game, I saw a lot of fathers there. Even mother, there's a lot of parents attending these games, and that's a good thing. You know, if you're able to, sometimes we can't do it, right? Because maybe, you know, your work schedule doesn't allow you, allow you to do so. But if you have time, be there for your, for your kids, especially boys. Uh, I think boys really need to be able to see their dads, you know, doing things with them. And then we'll, we'll avoid the other issue that one of our speakers mentioned, or, you know, when you get older, and the kids never saw you, and then you expect them to be there for you, right? So if we're able, if we're able to be there for our kids, um, hopefully when we get older, we'll have a different kind of relationship, and they're not saying, well, you were never there for me. So, uh, let's see, what else did I see? So maybe, just maybe spend a few minutes just answering any questions anybody has. Is there anything that anybody would like to ask me? Oh, one thing that I forgot actually. Uh, and maybe for the past I'd like to ask the advice. What I've noticed is for most men, especially people that are you know older, when they move to the US, one of the challenges that they encounter is the relationship with their wives change. Uh, for the most part, when you in Kenya, uh, even if you have house help, your wife is the one that kind of cooks for you, or at least is in charge in that, that department, right? They make sure the food is made, they make sure the house is clean, they make sure you know you have you know, clean clothes and you know iron clothes to wear. What happens is when people move to the US, uh, they expect the same, but more than not, the wife actually ends up working longer hours and making more money. So what happens is the relationship become a challenge because men come home and they expect the wives to do the same things they are doing when they are living in Kenya. So there's a lot of broken homes, meaning people end up you know, separating or divorcing because the expectation of the man becomes unrealistic depending on the conditions that they're in in the US. 
of an industrial in, in general, right? Because as a man, if I'm you know, providing, and there's certain expectations, if I come home, I should have food ready, it should be warm, somebody should bring water for me to wash my hands, the dishes should be done, right? And then you move to the, uh, the US or anywhere else, and the wife goes, they work, most of the women or the people that move to the US, they do nursing jobs, because one, they pay well, and two, there's plenty of those jobs, right? So you can make a lot of money, even sometimes working 16 hours a day. So the woman goes to work, works for 16 hours, comes home, the man's watching TV, expecting what? Food, right? Expecting the house to be clean, expecting all those things that they were being done for when they were in Kenya. And this creates a big friction, and most men that move there, at, you know, past a certain age, are not able to sustain life over there. Uh, it's a big challenge. But I do agree with everybody what's been said that as men, we have a lot of pressure. But I think that we have to be able to take the challenge in stride and you know, deal with the circumstances as they come.